Hi, everybody. How you doing? Okay. Hello, Professor. Nice to see everyone. Got a good good turnout tonight. So let's see. Um, I did post an interesting link on the on the um, Discord here about Coursera courses. So go ahead and send me a message if you're interested in that. I've gotten a lot of interest, a lot of students sending me messages. And I've just been passing them along to the dean. So hopefully you can get something out of these courses. And all you have to do is just find a course, hello, on Coursera, and just send me a link to what you want. And then that's it. Then I can, I can go ahead and pass it on for you. So let, let's go ahead and actually get started with that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's see. So the cameraman, I do believe, is here. So that's good. So we can get started with the recording. And go ahead and jump on the, the live stream. Okay. All right, I'm going to have to go ahead and mute myself, mute the student here. All right, so we still have some people who have not jumped on the have not jumped on the class. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and use this Coursera site to search for a particular topic. So let's go ahead and type out cyber security and look here. They have an IBM cybersecurity analyst. All right. So let's look at this. Hi, Sasha. And we can see that Coursera offers a cybersecurity cyber analyst course. Now, the thing is, all a lot of these courses are free, right? It says enroll for free. But if you want to get the certification to put on your LinkedIn, you usually have to pay them. So they have some sort of deal with Miami-Dade where they are offering Miami-Dade students a free account on here and a free, well, just basically everything for free. So um, you'll get the full certification. So I, I actually started talking about this with my um, C++ students earlier today, how Coursera is a bit like a competitor for Miami-Dade, but we can think of them as just compliments, complementary, because you can take courses like the one you're in and hopefully get some good knowledge out of it and take other courses at Coursera and get knowledge from their experts, because they have some world-class, you know, giants in the field doing these courses. No, they don't give college credit. That's, that's sort of the difference. Um, so, so I guess I would say all of them, because the email I got from the dean was just send the courses you're interested in. So, I mean, there's, there's, just the issue of time. So if you could just send me like three or less, we'll say, that you're interested in, then I can pass on your name and your info to the dean. And then you can get enrolled in these courses. So I think, I think you'll get a lot out of them. Um, they have a lot of specific info and knowledge. And, and well, just send me a DM with 
the courses and your MDC email. So if you just send me a direct message with the courses you want and your direct email, like for instance, the cybersecurity, I, I just went to Coursera and typed, what do you want to learn? And you can just, you know, type whatever. Like these are the other courses that people were interested in. Like one student said he was interested in discrete mathematics. So I signed him up for this. And, and now here's the thing. I'm just passing on the course name and your email to someone else. So I'm trusting that they're going to be the ones to sign you up. Now, I'm, I'm going to assume that they will sign you up. But I'd say if after a month you haven't gotten anything, like if we're at July 29th and you've gotten nothing from Coursera, then just tell me again. And then I'll talk to the people at Miami-Dade and say, hey, did you send this in? Because, you know, sometimes in big bureaucracies, maybe things like that can happen. Um, but yeah, definitely everybody from my earlier class who sent me a message, I sent it along and I think it'll be smooth. It's, it's not going to be any problem. It's going to be a, a, a nice straightforward thing, but it's not college credit, but it could be useful to put on your LinkedIn. It could be just useful if you're at an interview and somebody says, what do you know about discrete math and you say well in addition to this college class i took a coursera course and then you're an expert and you can talk about it and answer questions then that would be really useful so go ahead and just look through the site and then at your own leisure over the next day or so just go ahead and send me it would be nice if you could send it to me today if if you're interested but um, many of you are taking multiple courses, it might not be for you, but if you have some free time and you want to take advantage of this, you should send me a message. So it says free learning resources during COVID-19, and that's, that's really where, where this is coming from. Let's see if you can do, sign up for this without, you know, according to this, let's see. According to this, maybe you can sign up for it without having to go through me. So if anybody's interested right now in testing that out, that might be kind of cool. Because I, I thought a site like Coursera, it seemed kind of strange for people to have to email me and then to email the dean, but that's what I've been doing today. But now that I look at the site, I see they have a direct link. So if at some point you wanted to try just to type your info in there, Maybe you already have direct access. I just learned about this today. So I'm, I'm not a, a super big expert on this. But I, I have done some MOOCs myself. I did CS50. That was a really good one. Um, I did one about AI. I did one with Python at MIT. That was a really good one. I like that one a lot. It was Python MIT MOOC. This is it. This is it. So, but no, they have it on a different site too. Here it is, edX, yeah. So edX is another good one. And it's totally free. You, you can just take the whole class for free. So if you like Python, you could do edX and uh, study that. And it's really, really a good site. Um, so, all right, any other questions or comments about the Coursera deal? All right, well, go ahead and send me a message with that and try just clicking on the site later. And there we go. So the, the first exam is still open. If we go to class.memer.io, it's open, but for a lower grade. So we can go here and see summer 2020 java and we see programming test one is still open so i usually keep tests open for a few days after the official due date most people on good scores mostly and you don't have anything to worry about but if you haven't done the exam you really have got to do the exam so i got a lot of messages from people on discord saying things like well um i couldn't I couldn't access the circle class. I couldn't access to this class, to that class. One of the biggest issues was just working within the Memer IDE, right? 
So if it's easier for you, you can go ahead and work in Replit and code it out and then download from Replit. So let me show you how you can do that. We just go here to replit.it. And then we make a new REPL. Um, professor? Yes. Uh, for some reason, REPL didn't allow me to change the name of the file. So I couldn't really work in REPL for the tests. Um, well, let, let me show you how you can do that. So all you have to do is just create your REPL. And then you, you see this button that says, well, let, let's wait till everything loads up. It says add file. You just click on that button that says add file. And then you just type out the name. So we could do it like this, circle.java. Now there's an even easier way that we can get the files onto Replit. So you'll notice here inside of programming test one, if we're here in the sandbox, well, it's good. Only seven people haven't started it, which is good. Um, so here, if we're in programming test one, you see we can download the starter code. So we download the starter code. And then once we download the starter code, we can just drag it and drop it into Replit. <clears throat> so how do we do that? Well, after we download it, we extract it. Okay. And then once we extract it, we just go back here to Replit. And then we can just click on the three files and I just drag it across. And now we have array size.java, check array, and then circle.java. So you see now you can work in a more comfortable environment. Like if you don't know how to use the Memer IDE, even, even though it's not hard to use the Memer IDE. So here we are inside circle. So we make our variable. Go ahead and refresh this. So I, I think the, the trick is for working with these files to realize that it's just text. Like you can copy and paste it. You can drag and drop the files. And it's just text. So we can go ahead and make our radius, double radius. And then inside here, this constructor, we have to say radius equals one. And then this constructor, we have to say this dot radius equals radius. And then after we've worked with this, we just go over here and we run it with Java C circle dot Java. takes a minute to start the compilation. And this is the most common message I got right here. Many, many messages. Okay. Everybody would send, not everybody, but lots of people sent me messages, missing return statement, missing return statement. So there are different reasons why people have that issue. And, you know, I'm not going to give away everything here now, but the point is Java code won't compile unless you actually type something in here. So if I was to just type return zero and return zero, now if I compile it, and run it, this is the other thing that I got messages about. People would say, all right, I ran it and it doesn't do anything. But the issue is you have to look down here at the main method. So what is the program waiting for at this point? Yeah, exactly. It's waiting for an input. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm not somebody who would ever get like angry if a student asked that question. 
but sometimes there's a lag between you know you asking and maybe i'm teaching a python class or one of the two c plus plus classes or whatever and so there might be like some time in between you asking and me giving you a response so it's just really important to investigate things as much as possible where you look into the main method and you see oh okay there's a scanner and it's waiting for a double so if you go back here and you type all right two well it just says zero for everything because that's all i have inside of these methods but you will obviously put the correct info inside those methods and then the other thing is once you submit it to memer you're going to get feedback so so let's go ahead and let's just type some nonsense out for this so we can say for this return new int zero and then for this one we can say return a okay all right so now we have something written for everything so we want to get this from replit i'm just showing you a different way that you can get this info so what you can do is you can click on the three dots and you can say download as zip download as zip and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the, the test and we're going to say submit and then we're just going to drag and drop the file that we just downloaded into here and not sure what just happened there but let's try that again so we'll go to that go to 537 that looks like the time okay so we say submit submit okay so i got 10 out of 100 points 10 out of 100 points what went wrong well let's look at the different feedback so we can click on array size one and you can see check array dot java 19. oh wow so this one i totally didn't even do the right return type so if i go back to check array oh that's pretty stupid you know what i did I looked at what was being sent into the method, looked at parameter, and I used that to have the return type. But Java can't convert an array of ints into a Boolean, right? So that, that's going to get you a compilation error. So that was just me looking at it quickly i saw the int bracket array and i thought okay i'll return an int array but that's ridiculous because the return type is right here the return type needs to be a boolean so it would have made more sense to say something like return true and then we wouldn't get the compilation error okay so that's how you can use memer to get feedback so then we can click on array size 2 and somehow that passed okay and then we can click on this one and see everything failed but we didn't really do any work on it right okay so there was a comp compilation error so we can go back and fix this here and say return true all right and then just i'm gonna do the steps one more time just to show you so in replit we can click on the three dots next to add folder so we click on the three dots and we say download as zip and then we go back to memer and we say submit and then we drag and drop this and let's try that again 
540, submit, submit. Okay, look at this. I got a 50% just turning in nonsense, right? Just because I said true, and a lot of these cases are true. So you can, you can practically turn in nonsense and still get a somewhat, I mean, that's not a good score, but it's better than a zero, right? And the worst thing is just to have code that won't compile because that, that's a bad mistake that I had up here before where I'm returning an array of integers when the method expects a Boolean. You can't convert an array of integers into a Boolean. That's, that's really a bad error. So this just shows how easy it is to get a lot of these test cases through because many of them are like true false. So, you know, I am going to go through and look at your code, but trust me, anything that compiles is better than nothing. So people who just don't do anything, that's really a mistake. You got to turn in something for this. And, um, you know, we're still early in the semester. You can still get things done, get good scores, but you got to start now. So you can't let the assignments build up, build up, build up. So just a reminder that this programming test one is still open for the students who haven't done it yet. And um, just a little bit more about how you can use Replit to get it done. Okay. So does anybody have any questions about using Replit with, with this? Okay. Oh, we do have a question being typed. Good, good. Perfect. <clears throat> so um, some of you might prefer Replit over Memer just because you, um, you know, just use Replit more. And then like we talked about before, you could also in install IntelliJ. How many people did install IntelliJ? Let's just do a little poll. Anybody? I know there were a couple people during class. Okay. Oh, wow. A lot of people. Okay. So did anybody have trouble? Was it trouble for anybody to install IntelliJ? Hopefully, hopefully not, which is good. Good, good. So I, I would encourage everybody to inst in install IntelliJ because IntelliJ will really help you. Well, let's say it may help you for your final project. And you, remember, your final project is one that you pick. So, um, you know, we'll start talking about that more in the weeks to come. But that, to me, is one of my favorite parts of teaching Java. It's where, it's where students pick an idea and they run with it. And last semester, when this whole uh, quarantine started, we had students doing Discord bots. We had students doing um, games. Um, and a lot of this is based on YouTube tutorials where they follow along. And then at a certain point, they try to tweak it a little bit. And I think just following a YouTube tutorial and making it your own a little bit, you'll spend hours and hours and hours. It's, it's not like, oh, you followed a tutorial. That's not your creation. You need something to jump off of. And the whole point of the final project is for you to pick something instead of me saying, okay, you do tic-tac-toe, you, um, you do blackjack, you know, like, that's just me like putting something on you. If you want to do tic-tac-toe or blackjack, you could, but it's just, it's better when students pick something that interests them and that they can really just make something cool. And, and it's, it's really fun. So at the end of the semester, we show them off either with you making a video and I post a link to the video on the website or I just give you the screen and then you take over and then you talk about it. So if you have a um, microphone, it might be easier for you, to, for you to just show your project and then 
everybody gets to watch it but it's it's always a fun final project so that's just a few words about it but yeah yeah individual in the past um well i guess when the when the pandemic started the quarantine started there were a couple of people who wanted to work together which was fine um i let them work together but um usually people just want to work together i mean work alone um and i think i think like i'm okay either way usually i just assume it's going to be individual but if there's someone you really want to work with you could do that i wouldn't mind that No, no, they don't. I mean, I would say that it, it depends on just what people, like what their skill level is at that time. Like some people, some people do things like a bank account example. And the bank account example is very much like the slides we were looking at before, where you have a class account, and then you have a prompt where you let the user enter in their balance. And then, you know, like, it's not bad, but there's just not like terribly too much to it. But in the end, that's what the students said they were going to do. And, and that's what it all comes down to. It, it comes down to the student offered that idea. And then I said, okay, to that idea based on where the student was. Now I do get to know students even through discord because I say, okay, let's do this. Let's do that. And then some people give solutions really quickly. Some people do the test like five minutes after I post it. So if somebody like that said they wanted to do like add, you know, deposit and withdraw and um, show balance, then I might say, you know, that's that's too easy. You should you should pick something more complicated. But I like to tell this story about the blackjack game. And I might have even told this before in the semester because I just love it so much. I had a 20-year programmer, one of the best developers of all time I've had. You know, he's a highly paid person, works remotely, programs directly. He programs in C. Just, just a really cool guy. He was totally self-taught. He had never taken a single college class. And he was enrolled in this Java class. And I knew it early on that he was going to get everything really, really quickly. Because if you're that good at C, learning how to do classes and objects, I mean, like there's a bit of a learning curve, but he's just really friendly with computers. So I knew he would have an easy time. So anyways, he was a really good programmer. He was good with Java. And he said he wanted to do Blackjack for his final project. And I remember thinking, man, that's going to be so easy for him. What's the point? But I decided not to even send an email because I thought, look, this guy has had great attendance. He's never missed class. He probably never even needed to show up to class because he's so good. But he still added a lot to it. And I said, I, I'll just see what he does with Blackjack. And his Blackjack project, first of all, the GUI was awesome. It was an awesome GUI. And, and it was beautiful. Like He had nice transitions. And he spent a lot of time working with something called JavaFX to just make it really beautiful. And then he actually did work with probabilities. Like if you have certain cards and the dealer has certain cards and the other players have certain cards, what's the chance you're going to get this or the chance you're going to get that? And then he worked with betting and, and all sorts of interesting stuff. So in the end, it was awesome, awesome final project. Really, really cool. So it really depends on the idea and it depends on like just what you're wanting to do. And sometimes even a simple idea can become a cool project. Like a bank account project could be a big thing, right? Like there, there's definitely financial software that's huge, like tons of lines of code. I'm just saying sometimes students make it really simple. But honestly, at the point at that point in the class, they're like that's where where their skills are. And and in the end, that's how I try to view this final project. It's not like it's not like there's going to be one A and then everybody else gets a low grade. It's, it's more you work to your um, capabilities. And hopefully I have a pretty decent idea what your capabilities are. And also, at this point, most people are trying to 
do as best as they can because they, you know, they're just thinking about their future. So it's a fun project. And I hope that just gives you a little more about it. But you, you actually don't even need to worry about it too much because it's, it's really toward the end of April. So, all right. I mean, April, I mean, August, not April. Don't turn it in in April. That's too far. All right. So let's go ahead to the syllabus here and see what we have. Okay, let's go look. And we can see that we're on 629. Okay, so we're gonna really get into array lists. So let's go ahead and copy this link. And let's just post it here. So I think we probably have mentioned array lists, but now we'll really get into more detail about array lists. So the array lists are a resizable array, which can be found in the java.util package. So we can have an array list of strings. We can have an array list of bank accounts. We can have any number of different array lists. So this is the first example. This will just be an array list of strings, and all the strings will have cars inside of them. So we can go ahead and print this, uh, copy and paste this to our uh, Discord. And we'll just look at the syntax in a little more detail. So we see we need import java.util.arraylist. Of course, we have a class that we're working inside of. Java's object-oriented, so We've got to have a public class to work with. And then my class would have to be in a file called what? This is a bit of a test. So what, what would my class have to be saved inside of? Whatever your class is named. Say that one more time. Whatever your class is named in. Close, almost. So it would be, yeah, it would typed out that's i like that so it need to be my class and then this is also important dot java and that's needed so we can say java c my class dot java and that's how we compile it then to run it we say java my class all right so this one is absolutely correct and the part i put after about java c was just to remind you about the compilation. Okay, so let's go to Replit. And let's make a new Java REPL. And let's see. I am now getting an Amber Alert. Okay. Yeah, me too. Everybody's getting the Amber Alerts. One thing about the Amber Alert. I don't want to get too far off topic, but I remember like a mile from my home, there was like a really horrific thing with a mother and her, her child. It was developmentally delayed. She pushed him in a uh, canal. It was just like the worst thing. She had lied about it and said it was terrible, right? It was just, just a horrible situation. And I got no Amber Alert about it. And now I get Amber Alerts about things in Leon County. And I don't know. So... I have some I have some issues with this whole system if you know I didn't get an amber alert and it happened a mile away from me but maybe maybe other people got that amber alert I don't know Yeah the canal thing was it was horrific It was all over the news but I don't know oh you got an amber alert for that Interesting I didn't, I didn't get one for that situation. Oh, well, anyways. All right, so now we've got a new REPL. And what we're going to do is we're going to make, we're going to make an array list. So we'll say import java.util.arraylist. And then inside of here, we're going to type out array list string. And let's call it 
um, hobbies equals new array list. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to add three hobbies that you have, and then we will share at 6 p.m. Okay, so this, we'll get to know each other a little more with some of the hobbies that you have. So go ahead and just add the three hobbies, and then we'll share our three hobbies. Okay, let's share three hobbies. So it's, it's simple. It's just three lines of code. Just look at the previous example and then add three hobbies. Okay? Okay, let's see. So let's take a look at some of these hobbies here. We have playing video games, watching wrestling, 
okay? Argu <clears throat> arguing about soccer. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, so we have Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering. So if we run it, we can see that, yes, everything displays. Very good. And all right, we got some, some more hobbies here. Anime, sleeping, gaming. Sounds good. So um, somebody up here posted the prompt but didn't add the hobbies so maybe that was a mistake oh gaming was the only hobby that's funny well it, it's kind of funny when you know that i use discord because a lot of you have hooked up your games to discord so um, I can see that there's a lot of gaming going on, but that's fine. That's good. Hobbies are good. Uh, I used to like gaming a lot more when I was younger, but um, include but is not limited to. Yeah. But I think I think that um, games can be such a you know immersive, interesting, fun, great hobby. Um, I I just going down memory lane. I um, took out the Wii just this past few days and the Wii is so much fun the Wii is a lot of fun so you never know even games that are are kind of older can just be great okay so looks good the Wii is a classic all right so now we see how we can add the strings to this array list and now let's go ahead and change this so that we can get hobbies from the user. So let me go ahead and just fork this here. And I'll just assume these are now my hobbies. And then we can say we are going to ask the user to enter their hobby, hobbies, until they wish to quit. Okay? So what are the different elements we're going to need? If we're going to ask the user to enter their hobbies until they wish to quit, let's just sort of list them out as a group and then we can do it together. A scanner. Okay, very good. Scanner is, is good. So we can say here at the top import java.util.scanner. That's good. And we can see some other people put do while loop. Either a while loop or do while is fine. I'll just go with the first one, which is do while. And then we can put here do while. Now, we can actually have a Boolean variable that we're reading in. Like, we can say um, press true to continue, right? Or type true to continue. Or, or press one to continue. Something like that. So why don't we just do it with an int variable, press one to continue. We'll have int, we'll just even call it to continue, equals one. And we'll say while to continue equals one. And then inside here we can say what? What's next? Very good, a prompt. So we can say system.out.println, enter your hobby. And then we can have here the hobby being read in with the scanner. So we can say hobbies.add. Or you know what? Let's make a separate array list just for their hobbies. So we'll have array list, string, we'll call it other hobbies equals new array list just for the practice of 
making a new array list. And then we can say other hobbies dot add, and we use the name of the scanner. Well, we haven't made our scanner. We've only imported it. So we have to say scanner, scanner equals new scanner, system dot in. So we're going to say other hobbies dot add scanner dot next line because some hobbies might have more than one word. Okay. And then we're going to say here um, system dot out dot print line. Enter one to continue. Enter one to continue. And then we can add in to to continue with, well, not add in, we're going to set the value of to continue with scanner dot next int. And then at the end, we can loop through and we can show all of the hobbies. So we'll say string user hobbies, we'll just call it uh within other hobbies. Or just how about oh, oh, other hobbies. And we'll just print each one in its own line, print line oh. So let's run it and see if it works. So it says, enter your hobby. Uh, I like bird watching. And then it says, enter one to continue. We say one. And then, uh oh, what happened? Enter your hobby got skipped. What do you think is the problem with this situation? Who, who wants to try to take a guess? Exactly. It's the new line. So now we have an enter after reading in the integer, and it's hanging out in the buffer. When we go through the loop again, we have to ignore it somehow. So with, with C++, we had cn.ignore. Um, I believe there's an overloaded way of doing it within nextint, but probably the simplest way is just to type out scanner.nextline, just like that, and just read it and do nothing with it. So let's go ahead and try this out. We can say enter your hobby bird watching. Enter, enter one to continue. Enter your hobby. I like um, nature hikes. Enter one to continue. Okay, zero. Bird watching and nature hikes. So this is good. Now we have it so that the user can add in their hobbies until they wish to quit. So the cn.ignore is for C++. And then for Java, the way I dealt with it was just to have a scanner next line that just read in the enter and just got rid of it. OK? So let's think of a new array list. How about we make an array list of numbers? So usually, when we've been working with numbers, things like int, double, what are these called in Java? What's like the terminology? Is it variables? Well, they're variables. That's true. I guess what I was really going for, yeah, exactly, primitive types. So primitive types are, are different from objects because we, we can't run methods on primitive types, right? So. Java actually does have a wrapper class for these primitive types, and that's how we're going to make array lists of the numbers. So how we do that is we go like this. Array list of integer, and we could just call this numbers equals new array list like that. And then we can say numbers.add to numbers.add 17. Okay, so this is how we would make an array list of integers with Java. Okay, so now we have a question. What is the colon again in line 24? Let's go take a look. Okay, so this is called the enhanced for loop. This is the enhanced for loop. So the enhanced for loop works like this. 
and, and they have this in C++ too, actually. Um, it's going to continue through all of the hobbies in other hobbies. And we're just representing other hobbies, like the first hobbies with a string. So for each particular hobby, uh, each particular other hobby, string OH, we're going to go through all of them. So we've got the colon in other hobbies. So it's a, I guess you might call it syntactic sugar. It's just a, a shortened for loop, right? Like before, yeah, no, for each is, yeah, yeah. For each is probably what it's usually called. I mean, I once saw it in a book as an enhanced for loop and I kind of liked it, but I would agree with you. Usually you see it online as for each. Yeah, I would, I would totally agree with that. So this is the way it would be uh, the long way. You would say other hobbies dot size I plus plus and do whatever you want. Okay, so that that's the long way. But the for each loop is saves some typing. So let's go ahead and look up for each Java. Oops, JavaScript came up. And let's go ahead to Geeks for Geeks. That's usually a pretty good site. And let's just go ahead and put this here. You guys can look through this link at your own timing. Okay. So, great. There we go. That's that. So now we have an array list of integers. So let's go ahead and actually make a new REPL just so we don't get confused and everything's not in one REPL. So let's make a new REPL and call it adding numbers. And I, oops, made the wrong language. Let's try that again. Adding numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this link here to the Discord chat. Yeah. I actually have two C++ classes going this semester, so spend quite a bit of time in that language. So now we have adding numbers, and we're going to go ahead and make a new prompt for you guys to do. So we'll say, ask the user to keep entering numbers until they enter the number, until they enter zero, right? So zero will stop. Once they enter zero, it stops. Ask the user to keep entering numbers until they enter zero, okay? And then what I want you to do is, loop through the numbers entered and sum all the positive numbers okay so it's it's a little bit involved you're going to have to ask the user for some data and the whole point is you are going to store i'll just write this in here store all the numbers in the array list. So let's let's go ahead and make sure this makes sense. Ask the user to keep entering numbers until they enter zero. Store all the numbers in the array list. Okay, period. Then after you do that, loop through the numbers entered and sum all the positive numbers. So this should take a little bit of time. Let's, let's say, let's give us until, I don't know, 621. 621, let's show off this working. So any questions about the concept? Okay, let's all try it.
All right, let's see. Was that too little time? How how's it working with the allowing users to keep entering numbers? Well, then let's let's wait a bit for people to finish it. If you're stuck on something, you can go ahead and post that and I can try to help you with it. All right, let's see. We have a possible solution here. Take a look. And if you're still working, that's fine. You can just keep working. <clears throat> All right, so it says array list integer numbers, good, equals new array list. Nice. And we've got our scanner called scan. It sounds good. Then we've got total equals zero. Okay. And we're going to say, enter a number, numbers add, just scanning for the next end. That's good. And we say, while the numbers, oh, this is clever here. So we say, while the last item in the numbers isn't equal to zero. This is really, this looks really cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and run it. And we'll say uh, 20, and we'll say 5, and then we'll say 0. Okay, very good. So that works. So this is the first nice bit of code we can comment on. Post directly to the Discord chat. That's nice. And basically what that's doing is it's getting the last element of the array list and checking to make sure that it doesn't equal to zero while the number while the last number doesn't equal zero while the last number doesn't equal zero so if the last number is zero then it breaks out so when zero is the last number this loop stops so that's good i like that and then if we look further we can see we've got the for each loop. And then inside there, we're going to be using the ternary operator, right? So we see if number is greater than zero, yeah, go ahead and add it. Otherwise, um, let's see. So we got is the number greater than zero? Yes, we send the number. Otherwise, we just send zero because we don't want to add the negative numbers. And then that's what we get. We get the total is 25 so lots of clever code in there i like it very good now was anybody else able to get a working solution to this you can go ahead and post if you were stuck on something we can use it as a good learning tool Oh, that just gets the element of the that just gets the element of the uh, array list. It's it's like how we would access in an array. So, um, so this is sort of how I was envisioning people to do it. Um, I was. I was envisioning people to just use the enhanced for loop, like the, the for each, then just adding them all together with an if statement. But this works fine as well. Um, so if you don't want to use the get statement inside this while loop, you can just sort of you can just sort of do the check in here. Like, like you can say, all right, let me go ahead and just fork this code. 
And we can just put this into a temp, int temp equals that. And we can say, <clears throat> if temp equals zero, then we'll just break out of the loop. Otherwise, we can continue. Okay. And then we can say numbers.add temp. So now if we run it here, we don't have to use the dot get. So we can say enter a number three, negative three, zero, total three. So this is another way that we can do it without having to use the dot get. Okay, get is the same thing as how we access in an array with the brackets. So if we have int numbers equals one, two, three, four, how would we access the first element there? How do we access the first element? Yeah, but just, just type out the code. So, well, it wouldn't be called int. We look at the name that we gave it. Yeah, numbers. Very good. That's okay. So it's it's numbers at position numbers at element zero. Array list, right? We would do something like this. We would have array list of integers, and we could call it nums equals new array list. And then we'll go ahead and add. Uh, what number did we have first? That was number one, right? So we have one, two, three. Okay, so we'll add one, and then we'll add two. So we can't just use nums position zero. This won't work. So instead, we have to use like this. We say nums.get position zero. So we can just use nums.get, and then we can access the first element, or we can access the second, third. So the two, the two are the same. Yeah, dot .get is, is the syntax for array list. Professor, I have a question. Sure. Um, on line 19, you see the for loop. Um, are you initializing number on line 19 on the for loop? Like yes. Number? Yeah, right. You're creating yeah. it. For for yeah, loop. you have to create number in there. Mm -hmm. To do the, how you call it, the enhanced for loop. Right, right. Oh, OK. Or Thank for you. each. Yeah, that no was problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's what we have to do. We have to make this int number inside of the inside of the for each statement because we need to make the variable to work with. And then outside of that, it won't exist. It doesn't exist. Number doesn't exist <clears throat> outside that for loop. <clears throat> Okay, so I saw somebody else typing. Numbers.size is the size of the whole array list. Yeah, so the funny thing about Java is different data types have different ways of figuring out how big they are. So with strings, you would have something like this. You would have string name equals David. And then if you want to find out the length, you'd say something like string.length. Right now, if you had an array with Java, you could have something like, um, I don't know, string possessions equals uh, car, bike, computer. So if you wanted to know, wanted to know how many possessions somebody had, you would use possessions.length without 
the parentheses. So for an array, an array has length as a property. And a string has length as a method. So that's why you see the parentheses after name.length. But for possessions, it's possessions.length. And then now we have an array list, which is tonight's real focus. That's where we can have an array list of, I mean, it, it could be just about anything. We'll just make an array list of integers, numbers equals new array list. And then we could say numbers.add to. Then we want to figure out how big numbers is. We would use numbers.size. And that is also a method. So for an array list, size is a method. So we have three different things that we've been learning about, three different ways to get the length. And that's just one of the quirks of the language that you got to learn that stuff, or most likely just look it up. But after enough time, it'll just come to you. You'll, you'll remember it. Yeah, it is. So, so we have a choice with an array list. We can decide whether we want to have a specific type of object or we just want to accept any, any object. So what we put in between those angle brackets is what type of data we want to store. So if we wanted, we could have just an array list of everything, right? We can just have something called array list A equals new array list. And then this can add all sorts of stuff. We can say a dot add one, a dot add hello, whatever, whatever we want to add. That's legal. Um, yeah, you can have an array list of, uh, you can have an array of objects too, sure. You could just call it object O, equals new object and we'll say 10 items in there and we can say or I'll, I'll put that in nice formatting we can say hello o1 equals 2 on and on and on so yeah you you could have an array of objects e either way i mean the idea is you usually want to try to have like some order with how you're storing things because otherwise you have to check for the type before you do things and it can get kind of messy. So it's just nicer if you have a specific type that you're storing in the array list or, um, I mean, it just, it just makes life easier because th there is the is instance. You can figure out with Java if something is an instance of something else, but it just, tends to be a little more code. Does that make sense? How you can have any sort of object you want entered in when it's an array list of objects or an array of objects. Okay, good question then. All right, looks good. Okay, so we've done two different examples with the array list. We've done a few different examples with array lists. Why don't we do an array list with a data type that we make up? So instead of strings or objects, why don't we just make up a new class? So let's see, who can, um, who can we ask? How about just anybody think of a noun we could make a class with? So just whoever types something out first, any, any sort of noun. Okay, a toy, perfect. We'll stop there. I like that. So we're gonna go back to 
replet, and we'll say new REPL, and we'll call it the toy program. Or how about toy database? I like that, toy database. So the first thing we're going to have is we're going to have class toy. And then we'll just keep track of three fields about the toy. Okay, so just continuing on with this, um, three fields for a toy. What are three things we want to keep track of about toys? Okay, price is a good one. Let's put a thumbs up to that. Okay, size, like if it's, maybe we could do size of, age group is good too. Perfect, three good things. So we can go ahead and have price, size, and age group. So we can have in here, price, size, and age group. Now, if we were really doing this as like a serious business application, there's probably a lot we'd need to learn about the toy a lot we'd have to think about, but we're, we're doing this as an example to see how to make toy objects go into an array list. So we're just gonna be as simple as possible. We'll say double price, and for the size, um, what would be a good measure of size? How about the, how about the cubic, how about, how about just the volume in inches or something like that? Double, Volume and inches, cubic inches, volume and cubic inches. I don't know. That seems like a reasonable thing with size. And then we'll have the age group. Um, usually the age group is, how about we have like a min age and a max age. So we can have int min age and, and max age. And that, that's probably a good way of, of doing it. And then for like max age, we'll say no one lives past um, 120. So that'll be like the, the highest max age you can have. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our constructor now. So we can say public toy, and we can send in double price, double volume in cubic inches, int min age, and int max age. And then we go ahead and we set all the items. We say this.price equals price. This.volume in cubic inches equals volume in cubic inches. This.min age equals min age. And this.max age equals max age. All right. So this is our constructor if we have all the data. If we don't have the data, let's just go ahead and add that constructor into. So we can say public toy, and I'll just go ahead and copy this into Discord so people can follow along. Okay, now inside here we'll say the price is going to be equal to nothing, um, which is what it would be set as a field anyways. We'll just do it real explicitly, and the volume in cubic inches. Um, zero and the min age will be zero and the max age will be 120. okay so this is just a default toy and maybe if we wanted to change these numbers we could we could just say all right for your average toy it's 575 or the cubic inches is 20 cubic inches whatever all this can be changed this these are all these these values depend on the problem. So th that can be changed. Just the point is we have two constructors. So we have constructor that sends in two doubles and two ints, and then we have the no argument constructor. No arg constructor. Great. So now that we have our two constructors, let's go ahead and let's try making some toys and then adding them to an array list. So we can say array list of toys, 
right? So we just type array list toy. We've got to have at the very top import java.util.arraylist. And then we're going to give this array list a name. Why don't we just call it toys? Equals new array list. And then we can say toys.add new toy. Toys dot add new toy. Let's say this one costs nine ninety nine. This one is twenty five cubic inches. It's from three to one twenty, and there we go. All right, so I see a Professor, lot of. We can't see your screen. Oh, you lost it. Okay, let me go back and fix that. Okay, let's try that. Is that better? Okay, perfect. So um, let's just go over this code and we'll make sure that we understand what it's doing here. So we have a class that we're going to keep track of the price of a toy, the volume in cubic inches of a toy, the minimum age that someone can play with the toy, and the maximum age. And then we can send in the data double, double, int, int. So this is a constructor. And then we can have another constructor called a no arg constructor. Oh, I, I haven't really done anything yet. So it should probably just still be sitting there. Here, let me let me try something. Can you see this? Did you guys just see me type that out? You didn't. Okay. No. So let me let me change to a different tab. Can do you guys see a Google Earth view? Can't see nothing. Nope. Okay. Let me try closing Discord and coming back. So let me do that. All right. All right. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect, good, good. Yeah. So I guess I guess there's a lot of congestion. Everybody's on Discord, so that, that stuff happens. All right, so let's go back to here, the toy database. And the whole point of this program comes down to these lines right here. Let me go ahead and copy these lines and paste them inside here. So we have we now have an array list that can only take toys. So if I try to just add a word to this array list, let's see what happens. So I can say toys dot add um, Barbie, and then we run it. And we see this error. Incompatible types. String cannot be converted to toy toys.addBarbie. Now, a few minutes ago, when we were talking, a student asked a good question about how we can accept anything. I said that there is a way that we can make the array list accept anything. Who wants to take a shot at typing that out? How could I change this code so it will accept the Barbie? Maybe you can just scroll up and look through the chat a little bit earlier.
Okay, we could put object. We could even just take everything out. So we can just have array list of anything. And now it works. Okay? So this right here will accept anything. This will accept anything. Any object can be added to that array list. But it's better to be specific like we have up here. This this is this is preferable because then we can limit what is being entered into the array list, right? We'll say, okay, it's only toys. That's all we're going to be entering into the array list. Okay, very good. Why don't we go ahead and why don't we look for an interesting problem to solve on Code Wars that involves an array list? So let's let's all go to Code Wars and let's search on the kata. And we're going to only search by Java. And we'll say I have not trained on. And we'll look for level 7. All right, let's see. Something that would involve an array list. So let's look through quite a few. Here we have one. You are given a sequence of a journey in London, UK. Okay, sequence. That sounds kind of like it could be an array list. Let's see how they send it to you. Mm, they send an array of objects, which is kind of cool. So actually, wow, this problem is relevant to... This problem is relevant to what we were talking about. So it's an array of objects. Maybe we could keep looking for an array list, or we could solve this one together. So this, this is possible. I mean, I, I'd like to probably stick with array list, because that's what we were just talking about. So, so we'll put that one on a possible list, and we'll just keep looking through. Then we have one about an ATM. <clears throat> Let's see if the ATM uses anything with array list. No, that's nothing with the array list. Um, 2D vector mapping. Sounds good if you're making a video game. Um, no, that's, that's not it. Let's keep looking. Will you survive the zombie onslaught? Let's see if this has an array list. No, no array list in there. A lot of regular expressions. Conference traveler. Let's see. No, that's arrays of strings. You can skip that one. Um, fun with lists. This sounds this sounds possible. Um. No, it's, it's more like implementing your own linked list. So if you take a data structures class, you'll do things like this. This, this is for data structures. I mean, we could do something like this, but I'm looking for specifically array list problems. Um, let's see. O-ring arrays, stacked balls, histogram. That might be interesting. No, it's still just an array. Let's see. Lunar mathematics. No, that's definitely not going to be an array list. Maybe let's try... Let's see. Oh, an array sort. But that's that's got array in it. No. They don't really have too many array list problems here. Describe a list. Maybe that's maybe that's it. Okay, this is this is possible. Okay, this looks doable. Let's let's look at this one. Okay, let's all let's all look at this one. So sign in to Code Wars and click on the last link. <clears throat> 
Okay, so everybody sign into Code Wars and then click on the last link. So let's read through this. It says, write function describe list, which tells if the list is empty or contains one element or more. So we can look here and we see, we see there are a few different options. What are the different tests down here? Well, if we have, <clears throat> if we have nothing in it, it's empty. Okay, so, so that for nothing, empty for nothing, and we're returning a string. And then we have, if one item is in the list, then we would return for one item, singleton for one item. And then we have the other option is longer, longer for more than one zero or one items. Okay, so we have three different options. Now, let's take a look at this term list that we see up here. Let's go to Java list. And let's just take a look at this. So let's all click on this link here so we can learn a bit more about it. And we see list is an interface, all right? All known implementing classes, array list, the one that we're using, implements interface list. So an interface is just a set of methods that you have to define if you're making your class implement the interface. So what exactly is this list? Well. A list is an unordered collection, also known as a sequence. The user of this interface has precise control over where in the list each element is inserted. The user can access elements by their integer index, position in the list, and search for elements in the list. Unlike sets, lists typically allow duplicate elements. More formally, Lists typically allow pairs of elements, E1 and E2, such that E1 equals E2. And they typically allow multiple null elements, if they allow null elements at all. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at some of these methods for lists. We can see the first one that comes up is add, appends the specified element to the end of this list. All right, so we've seen this because we've had our array list and we've added strings, added integers, things like that. Clear removes all the elements from the list. And we can scroll down a little bit and see size. Didn't we talk about size a little bit before? This is how you guys learn about how to use these different things we talk about. Use the API. So when there's something you don't know, you just Google for it, you search for it, you Bing for it, whatever you want, go duck, duck, whatever, right? Like however you want to search for it. So nobody could memorize all these different things about lists. So that's why people look up the documentation. Like if, if somebody, I was walking down the street and somebody said, tell me everything about the, the split, the SPL iterator, for a list, I'd say, I don't know, right? Like, I'd have to look at the documentation to learn more about it. So anyways, this is just how you learn more about these different things in Java. So we get this list sent in. We also get this term final. Have we seen that term final before? What is final? Yeah, exactly. Final means it can't be changed. It's like a constant. In C++, you probably saw a const. So now we see final. All right, so that's good. We're not changing what's sent in. And let's see if we can do this. So what do you think is the first thing we should type out to do this kata? Somebody give me some direction. What, what should we type out? OK, if statements, good. So we can say if else if
And we've got else. All right, that sounds good. And then we have some more comments here. So yeah, we can use size with the if statements. That's that's another alternative. So we can say if list dot size equals zero. So if it's got nothing, then we return empty. Because you see, we're returning a string. And then what if it equals one? We return singleton. So we say else if list dot size equals one, return singleton. And the only other option would be it's longer, return longer. So let's go ahead and test this out. And oh, yeah, we have to have what happened. Actually, we'll just erase this. We don't need that. Okay. So it looks good. We passed all the initial tests. Notice I click, clicked on test on the lower left, uh, on, the, on the left side. After we do the test, then we run the attempt. Now, the attempt is going to have a lot more tests that we can't see. So it's possible we can pass the first initial tests, but not the hidden tests. It's like a mark on Code Wars, like of... of I don't know, pride, if you can pass everything from all the tests without having a mistake. Now, one thing that we're not checking for is null. So I think they might throw a null statement at us. So I don't think it's going to work the way we have it, but we'll go ahead and try it. Let, let's see if they included that in the tests. So we'll go ahead and click attempt. And they didn't throw null at us because it was a pretty easy one. It was just um, level seven. So we can say submit. And let's see. Oh, that's a nice switch statement. I like that. OK, so we have a question down here. The question is, could we do this with a hash map? Well, I mean, certainly, like, when, when you're the one writing the program, you can, you can pick the data structure. So you can. You can have a hash map or an array list or, you know, whatever, whatever sort of a data type, data structure you want. But like for these programs, you would just have to go with what they give you. So do you guys like switch statements? That's pretty cool. Pretty nice switch statement. But yeah, usually the earlier problems, they're not going to throw as much at you with like... Um, things being null or, or things like that. So this is a pretty early problem. Let's see how other people did it. Mm. Oh, this is nice with the ternary. That's a good solution. I like that one. Still don't like how it looks. Hmm. Well, maybe it'll grow on you. Maybe over time you'll start to like it more. Meh. <laughs> well, a lot of people didn't use it, so that's that's oh, there's one who used it. And oh now this is funny. Look at this solution. So this student, I mean this um programmer, he may be a student, may not be. <clears throat> He made an array of choices. You can either have empty, you can have singleton, or you can have longer. And then he took the minimum of two and the list size. So let's see here. We have list size of zero, and then he's going to be taking zero versus two. So zero is smaller, and then he's going to be returning empty. Okay. Now, why did he include the minimum with two? Hmm. 
let me think why minimum oh of course because it goes zero one two yeah makes total sense if you think about it okay perfect great 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 all right so yeah that that took me a minute but it makes sense all right very good i guess i guess that's why it was upvoted as clever because i had to think about it for a minute but th this is my favorite part of code wars when you learn from other people and you see how they did their solutions and i just really really like it so it's it's a pretty cool site then you can vote on it whether you liked it or didn't like it okay all right so what sort of questions or comments do you guys have about array lists at this point after we've done quite a few examples with array lists what what stands out or what what do you want to talk about Yeah, exactly. Size is similar to length. They just, to make it more confusing, decided to use a different terminology. Professor? Yes, go ahead. How do you add elements in an array? How do you add a what? Elements in an array. So the array is limited by the size that you set it to at the beginning. So if you say that you're going to have three lucky numbers, so you have int lucky numbers equals 7, 13, and 20, then that's it. It's lucky numbers has its size, and you can't change it. So lucky numbers, you can't have position four equals 100. It just, it'll give you an error, it won't work. So that won't work. So you can only work within elements zero, one, and two for the lucky number, lucky numbers array. You can't, you can't work with anything past that. So you can't keep adding like you do with an array list. That's, that's how they're different. Arrays, and array lists differ. Wait, so those are two different things. Arrays and array lists are different things, yeah. So how would you how would you add an array and how would you add an array list? So let's go to Replit and let's go ahead and start up new Replit, a new REPL. And we'll have new Java, and we'll call it arrays and array lists. OK, so first thing we'll do is we'll make an array of objects. So we'll say object O equals new object. And we'll say that we're going to have four different objects in this array. Okay, so let, let's go ahead and add some things. We can say at element zero, first element, we're going to put high. And then we can say at element one, we can say is number two. And then we can say this equals to new date. What's the object? Uh, so in Java, object is basically the super class to everything. Right in, in Java, all the classes that we've been working with, they come from this particular class. So let me go ahead and copy this here into this. So I see a new question here. Yes, that's true. <clears throat> yes. So if you click on this API link, it takes you to java.lang class object. Class object is the root of the class hierarchy. Every class has object as a superclass. All objects, including arrays, implement the methods of this class. So before we had a discussion about inheritance, how you have 
the parent class and the child class. So class object is the parent to every, everything in, in Java, except for primitives. All right. So all objects implement the methods of this class. So when we look at this example in Replit, where we have our arrays and array lists, let me go ahead and just post this link here so you can follow along. We're just adding in different elements. Like we're adding in a string, an integer, a new date, and we can just add in one more thing, um, a new int array. Okay, so now we added in a new integer array in there. So then we can go ahead and try to add a fourth item. I mean, a fifth item, excuse me. So we can say equals testing. So now we run it. Okay, we see date is not acceptable. I thought that that was acceptable. All right, well, then we'll just call it a new object. Okay, let's try to run that again. I think date was deprecated, actually. How come this parentheses next to uh, object, object? Okay, so um, there's parentheses because we're making a new object, and that's how you call the constructor with object. So object is a constructor? I'm confused. Uh, yeah, object has a constructor. So if everything in Java, all classes have a constructor. All classes have a constructor. So if we go back to our, let's go back to our Java object API 9. Okay, so here we go. We'll look at a more modern version of Java, even though it's going to be pretty much the same. Okay. So here we have the API. We click on the API. Class object is the root of the class hierarchy. Let's scroll down and let's see. Constructors. All right, what's the constructor for a new object? Well, the constructor looks like this. Object constructs a new object. So you guys see this, right? The constructor. So it's really important now that you guys are getting better with, with Java to start looking at the API to start learning more about how the language was put together. So I'm just going to put very important here. Okay. And then we scroll down and we see these are all the methods available to us with object. So we have clone. Clone creates and returns a copy of this object. So if you want to learn more about clone, we just click on clone. And we see the precise meaning of copy may depend on the class of the object. The general intent is that for any object x, the expression x.clone does not equal x will be true and that the expression x.clone.getClass equals x.getClass. Okay, that will be true, but these are not absolute requirements. So all of the different methods are written out in this documentation. So today, we're not super worried about clone. We're not super worried about equals, finalize. I'm just giving you an overview of what the object class is all about. Now, toString, that is something that we've worked with during the course. ToString is where we list out some details about a particular object. So if we click on ToString, we can learn more about it. Anyways, um, if we look back here, a student had another question, and it said, I don't understand the new object and new int part. OK, so I've got this array of objects, and I'm just putting random stuff. So the first thing that I put in it is just a string, which is an object. The next thing I put in it is an integer, but it's going to use the wrapper class to put it in as an integer object. And then I just write out equals new object. This is what we were just talking about. So I'll post the link to the Java API. 
Okay, this is where this is what an object is. And then here, a student asked before, is an is an array an object? So yes, an int an array is an object. So because an array is an object, we can go ahead and add it to our array of four different objects. Now, when I ran it before, I got this error. And that's because I had element, one element too many. So if I say 0, 4 equals test, and I run it, it won't work. So the Java array is limited by the size. So that's the first thing we, we have to understand. Arrays in Java are limited by their size. So that, that's just a key, key thing we have to recognize. Okay. Does everybody understand that concept? Java arrays are limited by size. Um, no, objects, you can make classes that have lots and lots of, of components. So, no, you can have objects that take up a lot of, a lot of memory. So I would say no to that. I would just say no, it depends on how the class is set up. Okay, so... Now let's go ahead and make an array list of objects. So we're going to need to import java.util.arraylist. And then we go down here and we say, all right, let's make an array list. And we're not going to put anything so it can accept any sort of objects. And then we'll just call it array list A equals new array list. All right, and then we can just go ahead and add the same things that we added above. We can say a dot add pi. Okay, that's allowed. A dot add number two. That's allowed. A dot add new object. And that's allowed. And then a dot add new int array. Okay, that's allowed. And then we'll just add one more thing, a dot add, I think I called it testing, something like that. All right, now we go over here and we run it. And we see there's no error. So this is the important concept. Array lists are not limited by their size. So you can keep adding, keep adding with dot add, and there is no problem. So somebody also asked, can we use remove? Yeah, we can totally use remove. So we can use remove. So let's try to print out system.out.println a dot size. And what are we expecting? How big is this array list? Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. So we're expecting five. We run it. And we see five, very good. And I'm also getting some sort of warning. Something I'm doing is causing the compiler trouble. So we can say a.remove, and let's remove the first item. And then let's go ahead and call system.out.println a.size. So now we're expecting four. So we run it. And we see, yes, it's, it's definitely gone. So this is how we can remove from the array list. Okay, but the real important idea is that arrays are set with their size and you can't add or you can't take away but array lists do give you the ability to remove and they do give you the ability to add so i would say between the two the array list 
is more commonly used. It's just a really useful data structure. So did that help? Because I know there was a question about what's an array and what's an array list. So hopefully this helps that make more sense. Yeah, I, sure. An array list can have array lists. An array list can have array lists. So that that's totally fine, right? Like like inside your first element, you can have another array list. So yeah. So I would say yes to that. I mean, I don't think it it it's not going to have the enforced. Um, length, which I don't know, sometimes it makes sense to have a matrix. Sometimes problems do lend themselves to a two-dimensional array, I would say. But there are probably a lot of times when having an array list of, having a list of lists makes sense. So it just depends on the problem. But yeah. Okay, great. So looks good. Lots of good questions, good comments. And let's see, we're doing pretty good on time. So why don't we go ahead and why don't we end with a fun project? So let's go to Project Euler, or it's actually pronounced Euler, Project Euler. That's how you pronounce his name. Have we done any problems on this site yet? I don't think so. Somebody says no. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the first problem. Yeah, and some of you maybe who have done programming in other languages maybe have used this site before, and it's, it's a really cool site. So if we click on the archives, we can see the first problem is a pretty doable problem. All right. Now, when I look at the number of people who have solved it, I can see almost a million people have come along, stumbled upon this site, and solved it. And a lot of those are from my class, because every programming class, I always introduce this site. I ask students to make accounts, sign in, put their, put their solution. And I think this is a really, really cool site. Now, the first problems are totally doable. Like, I use them in class. We've got Fibonacci numbers, prime factors, palindromes. These, these are all doable. They're fun. They're, they're challenging, some of them, but they're doable. Now, if you go to the end, uh, 88 people have solved the jumping flea. This is like crazy difficult, right? Like the, the advanced math, just 88 people have solved it, right? So those, those are like 88 of the top programmers mathematicians, like really they're into this world and very few people can solve those problems. But the problems that we're focusing on have been solved by almost a million people. So totally doable. So think positive that you'll be able to get this first problem. So let's go ahead and read it over. Let's go back to problem one. So it says, if we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of three or five, we get three, five, six, and nine. The sum of these multiples is 23. Find the sum of all the multiples of three or five below 1,000. So the trick is, can you write a loop that goes from one through nine, below 10? If you can do that and sum up all the multiples of three or five and get 23, then all you have to do is add two zeros and you get the right answer for the entire thing. Okay? So it's not a super difficult problem and you don't need to use an array list. So it's not like this is a continuation of the array list discussion or of the array discussion. 
This is just a problem that can be solved with a for loop, if statements, modulus operator, and print. Right? So you don't need that much. A for loop, if statements, modulus, and print. So I would like for everybody to at least try this problem. And then just to see like who might be good at a programming competition, just go ahead and message me when you're finished. So message me with your solution. And if we're sitting here at, uh, let's see, class gets out at what time? 7.30 or 7.40? Well, whenever class gets out, I'll still be here. 7.30. Okay, so you guys, at 7.30, if you can't figure it out, I'll just do a solution with you guys. 7.30, we will get the solution. But some of you can get it pretty quickly. And let's see how fast you can do it. So send me the solution. But everybody try it. Everyone try it. No, you could... You could use Replit. You could use however you, you prefer to code. I mean, Replit's good. But if you just want to send me the code, that's fine.
All right. Well, I've gotten quite a few messages. Um, go ahead and send me the message too, and I'll just go ahead and, and solve it with everybody. Nice. Looks good. <clears throat> So let, let's let's go ahead and do it together with everybody. Um, if you've already sent me the message, you know you're free to to log off. But maybe it's only going to be a minute. We'll only go like a minute over. So what we have to do is we have to do a new REPL. So we go here, new REPL. We'll call it Project Euler. And then we're just going to go ahead and type the type this out. Great. So now we have to have a variable to keep track of the sum. And we have to first go from 0, less than 10. And at each point, we're going to see if i modulus 3 equals 0 or i modulus 5 equals 0, then we'll just add that number to the sum, sum plus equals i. And then at the very end, we can just print out the value of sum. Now, if we run this, we get hopefully 23. But, you know, we always have to test. Good, we get 23. So we add two more zeros, and we get takes a minute, 233,168. So this is one solution that we could do. And I got quite a few DMs, so I was pretty happy with that. If you guys are still working on it, I know it was a brief bit of time, but I do like to keep record of everybody who stuck with the class from the beginning until now. So let's see for attendance. Let's host, um, I don't know, something random, the name of your elementary school. And I'll go first. I went to a place called Vineland Elementary. So go ahead and do that, and I'll just do attendance, and then we'll call it a night. Have a good day, Professor.